How do you create a message about healthy eating that kids will listen to? Make the messenger a cartoon. Meet the creators of a very successful storybook whose main character is a black chef with an African accent. Next on Black Issues Forum. Quality public television is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV. Welcome to Black Issues Forum, I'm Deborah Holt Noel. Anyone who has children has no doubt asked themselves, how can they get across a message of healthy eating when they have to compete with clowns, cute pets, and popular cartoon characters on television? Well, a project piloted in Mount Airy is helping out parents and caregivers with a character called Charles the Chef. In a moment, we'll meet the creators. But first, producer Jeff Smith brings us their story. These students at Therrington Elementary School are helping your children fight obesity. Have you had a good week? Yes! They're not just learning in this classroom, they're part of a research group to see if this man's idea will influence healthy eating. Now, what is one way that you can tell me real quickly is a way to be healthy? Just one person. You and Meet Roosevelt Pitt. He's a resident of Pilot Mountain and the creator of the character Charles the Chef. Well, what's the cliche? You know, the best kept secrets so are sometimes hidden away, tucked away. Uh, I think that's the same type of um, uh, scenario here. Um, but I can say for sure that uh, being here has been very, very, very um, positive for Charles the Chef. Welcome, kids, to the show. I'm Charles the Chef, and this is Let's Get cooking. Students are polled about their thoughts on eating a vegetable and then they watched the cartoon called The Power of Peas with Charles the Chef. Basically it was something that I wanted to do to really see if this is going to work. You know, even as uh, a positive individual as I am, you want to have proof, quantitative numbers that says Charles the Chef is working, he's going to help influence kids. So Therapy was willing to allow us to come in uh, and uh, actually test the children and the students there by having them actually view the animation and then we tested them to see exactly uh, what information was retained. Did you know that peas are very good for their body? Peas are great to eat and are an excellent source of vitamin C and vitamin A. Which have After the short program, students are re-asked their feelings of peas and the benefits of the vegetable. And the numbers were extraordinary. I mean, better than I even imagined. Uh, and that really set well with my heart, you know, to know that what I'm doing is really effective. Uh, and now we have the ability and the foundation to, uh, to propel it even more. The idea of Charles the Chef started out many years ago for Pitt. Charles the Chef came to me uh, when I saw my nephew, um, who at that time was five, a year, five years old roughly, and he was pretty much going out of control. I mean, he blew up. And I really didn't understand why. Even I didn't make the connection until I spent more time with him. And I saw what he was eating uh, at a particular a meal during breakfast, actually. Um, he had pancakes, eggs, a Mountain Dew, loads of <laughs> fat and carbs and calories. And then I saw, um, then I noticed his activity level was pretty much zero, where he just stayed inside, played the video games, the Xbox. And I understood then that, wow, this is something that literally is going out of control. After Pitt put his idea on paper, he asked his business partner and friend, Mashindo Kumba, to help bring Charles the Chef to life in a book form first. Children uh, today are stimulated very much by cartoons, and there's a bit of overstimulation, but there is a place where that training, that programming can be used for positive. So, um, and Roosevelt being so animated and myself being animated, uh, uh, loving cartoons and things of that nature, I just integrated what I thought was necessary for the minds that I was trying to reach. I'm a kid at heart. I'm a big kid. Um, I can tell you all about my action figures collection <laughs> for the early 70s up to now, but that I won't bore you with. Um, but when it comes to my books, I understand what kids want. Um, and they want something that's vibrant, colorful. Uh, they want something that excites them, that makes them feel that they are important and empowers them. And that's what's in Charles the Chef. 
uh, he gets to their level. He understands their thoughts. So magic, fantasy, um, all of that is woven in to Charles the Chef. And, and underneath all of that, the underlining factor or message is good eating, good health. The first book, Food Adventures with Charles the Chef, A Day at the Four Seasons, follows Charles the Chef and his band of characters as they go through their town interacting with local shopkeepers looking for fresh vegetables used in preparing healthy foods at the Four Seasons restaurant. What if there was a character that could help kids understand the importance of eating healthy, being fit, but also share with them good food knowledge? Uh, and that's where Charles the Chef's uh, code phrase or, or, um, or, or his saying, eat better to live better. Um, the better we understand what we're eating, the better choices we can make, the better we can live. I am one of the characters in a book along with my son, Atan Ra. Roosevelt's daughter is one of the characters. And they have friends, you know, by which other stories that go directly into the children's world and not viewed through the parents, but now we get into what the children do and their interactions and their conversations about food and those children of different nationalities, different sizes, different weights, uh, so that we can try to hit where everyone's comfortable and, and give them something to identify with. To fight things like the cold now Charles the Chef has life and is moving due to a partnership with Video Works of North Carolina, a video production company in Mount Airy that is handling the video animation. This is Charles the Chef saying eat better to live better. I'm kind of in love with Charles the Chef. He's an awesome little character teaching these kids to eat healthy, you know, and to, to like good foods not sugar smacks and candy bars and you know I, I want to see Charles the chef doing major event you know doing major shows excuse me 30 minute cartoons where the kids are watching it and talking about Charles you know because it's such a good thing so that was the reason that I got more involved to, to bring it more to life for now, the book and the video PSAs that have been produced continue to capture the attention of children and parents who want a healthier look at eating. You have so much that your kids see when you're out, you know, e even on TV. But like it, it, when you go to the supermarket, your kid sees all these characters on the cereal boxes. They see all these characters on cookies and things, and it's just like, buy me, buy me, buy me. And it's actually a cartoon character that she sees and can say, oh, well, he says that carrots are good. He says that broccoli is good, you know. And so it, it, it's something that gets in her mind that, okay, well, it, this food can be good, you know, and it's good for you, so. It challenges the thought that children don't like healthy. I think children like what they are taught because children are beings that adore learning. They adore good. And I'd like to welcome to the program our two guests. First, we have Roosevelt Pitt, otherwise known as Charles the Chef, one of the founders and owners of Charles the Chef, Inc., a children's book author and creator of many comic book characters for children's books. And we have Mishindo Kuumba, co-creator and illustrator of Charles the Chef and a professional artist. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. For having us here. And congratulations on creating such a bright and happy uh, character with a positive uh, influence. Um, I want to start with you, Roosevelt. Not, you know, the audience will forgive me for calling you Charles from time to time. That's okay. It often happens. I'm used to it by now. <laughs> well, you've got an entire uh, enterprise with Charles the Chef, and now, and, and you actually brought one of the tools with you. Tell us a little bit about this additional tool and how it's used in schools. Well, this is um, what we call a memory card for Charles the Chef, and it is a curriculum enhancement tools that um, schools are utilizing specifically um, B.H. Therrington in Mount Airy, who we work intimately with. And it's really a great concept. Um, again, it's called the memory card, and what basically we do with this card is share a short story about vitamins in this particular case, the vitamin of the alphabet, and it's quite interactive, actually. We open it up, and then you see all the vitamin of the alphabet from A to C to D to E and so forth. And then these particular uh, vitamins, we share about their nutritional value and how they help the body. And then we flip again. Ah. Oh, it's really quite cool. <laughs> and then we have more vitamins. Actually, vitamin K, I didn't even actually know existed until I actually did research. So during my, uh, along my journey um, with Charles the Chef. And uh, a lot of people don't know that it is a vitamin K and it helps the blood. And then what we do, we open it up again, 
Okay? And we, we at the end of the story. <laughs> okay? And basically it shares that eating fruits and vegetables can provide those vitamins that the body, body really needs. And then once we are completed, we flip it open again and mm -hmm. we're back where we began. Very so cute. Quite interesting and it's been quite successful for us. That's the kind of thing that gets the information in their hands and keeps it in their hands because they continue to flip and flip and flip it. Exactly. So that's a really neat tool. Um, and uh, Mishinda, I wanted to ask yeah. you about the uh, creation of Charles the Chef and um, really the art that you do in addition. Uh, you are a trained artist, but talk a little bit about um, the compelling nature of the cartoon, the animated character, and, and how that plays into educating kids. Well, um, the children are very influenced by what they watch, you know, and within a lot of cartoons, being a fan of cartoons, um, the messages that are in cartoons actually go into programming the, child, the child's thoughts about the world around them. One of these things is food. So Roosevelt viewing a circumstance concerning a young relative actually made him go into uh, resolution mode, you know, and see what he could do to create help or guidance, not only for the parent, but as a vehicle for the parent to the child to actually be a bridge to the conversation so that we can start talking about what is healthy eating? Is it, can it be hot dogs? Can it be hamburgers? Can it be all the things that we see around us every day as, as uh, 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 within cartoons and movies, you know? And he brought the idea to me and we've been working together for about 20 or so years and our, our, our links are already there. The way we communicate, if he can give me a simple idea and I can take it to the next stage. And um, that's what happened with Charles the Chef. Now being a vegan um, since I was 18 years old, the information that we're talking about now, I'm very versed in as well. So I was very glad to, to partnership with Roosevelt to actually create this character. Now, what, what kind of response have you received from children, black, white, and otherwise? Um, well, the response is, is generally positive, you know, just because it's new. And uh, as we were speaking of earlier, the quality that we were able to create in the presentation actually helps as well, because there are standards that children get used to. Now you have the storybook, and the storybook has the animated uh, Charles the Chef character, but then there's, or rather has the character, the cartoon, but then there's the animation that we saw in the package. Um, yes. Talk a little bit about um, how that animation was, was created and, and who's involved in that. Well, back to what I shared in the segment earlier, um, and I'm a kid at heart, so cartoons is where I grew up. You know, viewing and uh, being influenced. Um, one of the things I often share is that, um, like Popeye, you know, was a big influence on me. Uh, being a cartoon, he had spinach. Spinach made him stronger. And since back then, I was dealing with bullies <laughs> in school. <laughs> I said, well, hey, maybe I eat spinach, I can get stronger. Well, it didn't quite work out that well for me like it did Popeye in the cartoons, but however, I'm still eating spinach to this day. And the nutritional value of spinach, um, I'm able to you know, take uh, and utilize to increase my, um, and improve my health. Now, as far as the animation is concerned, it's um, a plethora of different people who I've worked with. Of course, the character design is based on Machindo's original work, uh, but I've worked with um, uh, artists from Pakistan to New York, a divorced actor for Charles the Chef is from South Africa. Um, so we have an international flavor uh, in the animation and, and its um, uh, uh, ongoing progression. Let's talk about the importance of um, making Charles the chef a, a chef of color. He, lo he looks black. He's he got is. the African accent. Yes. Um, how important is it that we have these uh, characters that are black? Oh, very important. Um, I'm sure Michelle can speak on it as well. Our history of being comic book creators from the early 80s, 90s, uh, was based on that premise that we need positive characters who are African American, specifically male because we are projected uh, in not so good a light. In movies, um, we're normally um, portrayed as either gangsters, drug dealers, things of that sort. So I wanted to make a change in that, not only with superheroes, but specifically when it came to Charles the Chef, because as a father of five children, I know that there are fathers, African-American and otherwise, who are really concerned about how their kids are eating 
and their health. And I wanted to bring that to the forefront by showing that as African-American male, we have those concerns as well. So Charles the Chef helps represent that in a positive way. Ms. Shindo, you cr have created actually or draw and drawn a number of um, superheroes with, with yes. great fine art. Talk a little bit about um, the heroes that you've drawn, the importance of it, and, and where these pictures can be seen. Well, I, um, uh, as a young man, was very attracted to futuristic imagery, Star Trek, and so forth. But the thing that was missing as I grew in the talent was my actual presence in the shows. It was very limited. And um, it kind of just clicked with me for some reason as a very young man, and I started on the process then to actually do more characters that reflected myself. So I actually did that by grabbing a mirror and drawing myself a lot so I can actually do a portrait without looking now. But um, it seemed to be very important as I got out into the world and people responded to seeing the characters portrayed in a way that they could identify. Because we do like uh, James uh, um, uh, Picard, uh, or Picard, uh, Captain Picard on Star Trek, right? But we also like Jordy LaForge and what he brings to it. But leadership roles uh, are very important as well. So to, to draw us uh, with that kind of majesty, you know, uh, having uh, the experience that we've had in uh, America historically, we have a self-esteem issue. And anything that will increase the level of self-esteem that we have, where self-esteem usually manifests through awareness, self-knowledge. The more you know about yourself, even if it's psychologically or whatever, your esteem will actually improve in the way you navigate through the world. perfect example of that is President Obama's election and how young black children now looked at the top office in the country being held by an African-American male. And it moves it away from the gangster image. It moves it away from the rap image. Not that those things are necessarily bad, but it, it, it broadens the ideas that young children have about what they are able to achieve. So our goal is to do a similar thing, to take what are our stories, you know, that have great history, great illustrious history, and bring those forward in a way that uh, still titillates in how we're used to being titillated with movies, but also gives us something for the soul. What's the connection between self-knowledge, um, eating habits, and healthy living it's so that people, parents and children alike, can, help, can make better uh, decisions about healthy eating? Because I, I have to admit, when I, when I have that moment and I need you know, some emotional calming, Right. I don't go for a carrot. Right. I go for ice cream. <laughs> That's all in your interaction with yourself. You know, we all must know our limitation. But when we travel down that road, just remember that that emotional eating will have a consequence. And if we start navigating knowing the consequence, and we can only know the consequence once we have the knowledge. Are we all being honest about um, really uh, trying to eat and live healthier, um, do you think, Roosevelt? Because we, there is a, an increased incidence of childhood obesity, especially mm -hmm. in the African-American community. So are we, number one, being honest with ourselves? Is the education there? And, and if not, how, how do we address those, those issues? Well, honestly, I don't think we are being honest with ourselves uh, because I think sometimes as parents, we can be in denial and detached from exactly how the food is affecting us. I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting in a hospital or, or a doctor's office waiting to see uh, a pediatrician, so to speak, for my children, and I see a young mother with an infant feeding the infant or allowing the infant to drink a Mountain Dew out of a bottle. And I've actually approached numerous times parents when I see this, I say, well, why are you doing that? Oh, well, you know, she likes it. Well, what, how, who determines what a child likes at eight months or three months? The parent, parent does. The parent does. But mm -hmm. so why did the parent allow the child or offer the child something of that nature as far as food is concerned? It's a lack of knowledge of what that food contains. So my argument is that, again, if we are willing to broaden our minds, to make a paradigm shift in our thinking, and actually utilize the tools that we have to increase our knowledge, i.e. Google, 
and Google our ingredients and just find out exactly what's in our foods and how it actually is a hindrance to our health. Then perhaps we can make a change and say, okay, wait, wait a minute, I don't need to give my child that. That's going to affect her sugar levels or that's going to cause her to be hyper or it's going to have maybe detrimental effects down the road. So that's the first step. Um, is to make ourselves aware by being willing to be open to increase our knowledge base by doing some due diligence as a parent at the beginning. Michindo, how did you become interested in healthy, uh, healthy eating and healthy living? My sister gave me a book on how meat was processed. That's and all it took. I read it, it seriously was all it took. And, and I think I was surprised as to how mishandled the, the processed food that we eat is. And that started me on this process at 18, and I said I wasn't going to eat any meat. And what it did is it drove me down the lane of looking for alternatives. How has it changed your life? Uh, I have a lot of energy. You know, I have a lot of energy. Uh, I'm not sick very often. I don't take um, uh, a lot of, uh, I don't take any over-the-counter medication. You know, if there's something wrong with me, I, you know, tend to seek, you know, more uh, healthier ways to address what my needs are. Um, but it's actually given me what I think is a, a calm quality of life and access to energy when it's necessary. Fight or flight is very important for our existence, just on the daily. But um, since I work at home and live at home, um, I can control my entire day. Like, I don't have to punch in a clock or anything like that. So when it comes to napping, I can take naps. Um, I can use the restroom whenever the need comes up. Uh, sometimes a, si a simple thing like that, just not going to the restroom, will actually impede your health in the long term, you know, because you're holding on to matter for a bit too long. There's so many elements uh, that contribute to our healthy state, um, both emotionally, uh, psychologically, and, and of course physically. Um, what piece of advice would you have? Would you like to really convey um, to parents and caregivers when, com when it comes to making a healthy choices uh, regarding food for themselves and for their children. What's, what's the, one of the biggest things that you'd like to make sure you get across? Well, that's, that's a long list of things I'd like to share, but I think if I had to pinpoint um, one, I would say it goes back to knowledge. Charles the Chef says, eat better to live better. The better to know your food, the better choices you can make. Um, I know as a parent of five kids, it is a challenge, you know, and I have my moments. However, what I've learned to do is to be more stringent about reading the ingredients, knowing what's in the food. That's, that's primary. I mean, that's, that's, that's the most thing, most thing that I would probably suggest is to know your food. Um, just as Michindo mentioned here, uh, it was his knowledge of what processed meat went through, the process of how they prepared it. That was all he needed to know. And w I think once we actually take that standpoint, then we can say, okay, this is something that I need to take out of my cupboard and replace it with an alternative and seek out more knowledge uh, about what we can eat to really sustain ourselves and improve our quality of life. Ms. Shindo, as you have uh, engagement and interaction with parents out there who maybe become introduced to Charles the Chef and this concept and who say, you know, there's just not a grocery store that has the kinds of foods available to make those kinds of decisions, you know, I'm doing the best I can here. Um, what, how do you help them to uh, implement some of the healthy eating habits that they need to and be encouraged to to um, make those decisions? Paying attention to uh, intake, what we intake, it, it really kind of goes down to that because even if you just have access to your average supermarket, um, you have to really watch salt intake, sugar intake, um, processed starches and heavy starches. And once you go there, whether you have access to organic or not, because some people either don't, can't afford it or don't have that kind of access, um, if that's the case, I think that there are still improvements on what you eat um, that you have access to. You have access to making improvements by eating more of the vegetables that are in, in your market, you know, eating less of the sugar, not eating too late at night. You know, these are simple things that you don't have to completely recreate how you're eating, but just possibly how you think about food. And we don't really know what our body requires daily to go. We're taught that we eat something and we're taught to eat 
what we like as opposed to what functions. So now, one of the things I use is that if I eat food and I get sluggish after I eat food, then I haven't really eaten. Because now I'm working the body and the body's not getting energy. See, the way I eat is when I eat food, I get a pickup. I get energy, because that's what food is for. Not that we're not supposed to enjoy the food. Of course, there are sweet things that occur in nature, and that's where that comes from. However, the primary modus of uh, eating is for energy. So what I've done over the years is kind of narrowed it down to eating when I need to eat, what I need to eat. Excellent advice. Um, and I really appreciate both of you coming out uh, you. to be with us this afternoon. Thank you. I'd like to thank right. Roosevelt, Pitt, and Mashindo Kumba for their time today. For more information on today's show, visit us online at unctv.org slash BIF. You'll find links to email us your comments and join us as fans of BIF on Facebook. Or you can call us on the BIF line at 919-549-7167. Be sure to meet us right back here each Sunday afternoon at 430. For Black Issues Forum, I'm Deborah Holt-Noel. Thank you for spending your time with us. Quality Public Television is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.